Um, a couple, uh, let's see, it's almost a month ago when I was last here, um, I began to minister in some areas of just understanding uh, how to operate in the last days. Uh, usually, it's a trial or a tribulation that someone goes through. And if you're not careful, you'll, you'll build a tent in the middle of the trial and tribulation, and you'll stay there for a long period of time. You don't want to do that, though. You need to get on through, because we're going to have trials and tribulations. We've got to learn how to get through them. Um, a lot of times, uh, you need to know how to deal with a word called an enemy. And what we taught here, or what we teach even at the church here is that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. So when you think someone is your enemy, they're really not. It's the spirit behind maybe them not acting right, okay? And when you understand that, man, it, it, it sets you free because then you can deal with not the person but the spirit behind their tackiness maybe. Anybody out there? you got to learn how to deal with your enemy. In John 10.10, 10, the Bible calls the enemy a thief because he comes to steal. The thief is the devil, of course. Steal, kill, and destroy. And so this morning, I want to just catch you up really, really fast on just how to respond to an enemy because, listen, the enemy, the devil, will cause people to get you off of the mark. Get you out of the blessing, the road to blessings. Matter of fact, they'll want you to stand on the top of the blessing instead of getting in the river because they don't want you to be blessed. The, the enemy does not want you to have victory. He wants you to be upset, mad, angry, doing things that you know better, shouldn't be doing. Because if he can get you off of the will of God into confusion, then, man, that's how people stay in bondage. And that's what we teach in, in rodeo is we try to get people to understand that there's an enemy out there that does not want you to succeed. He doesn't want you to, to have um, your desires met. The key is, though, is you've got to submit to your God. And then he'll give you all the desires of your heart. The thing we don't want to do is, is major on the desire. No, 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 major on Jesus. And then he'll just start blessing you and whatever dream, goal, vision you have, it'll come to pass if you're submitted to God. I, I remember Deuteronomy chapter 28 says... Uh, constantly, and it says it twice. If you'll listen to the voice of the Lord your God, right? Deuteronomy 20, about 1 through 15 or so verses are the blessing. You'll be blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed coming in, blessed going out, your, your ground will be blessed, your cattle will be blessed. I mean, all kinds of blessings. And then it pauses and says, but if you won't listen to the voice of the Lord... And then it talks about all kinds of curses. Well, listen to me. Jesus, as the Lord of your life, has redeemed you from the curse of the law. Amen. You don't have to live under the curse, but listen to me. The curse is still here because Jesus hadn't come back yet. As a believer, we're, in, we're not in the kingdom of living under the curse. We, thank God as a believer, we live under grace, mercy, forgiveness, etc., but the curse is still here. And a lot of believers walk into the curse every now and then. They, they do something. They sin. And before you know it, they're, they're under attack. They're going through a trial. They're going through a tribulation. Well, that's what the church is for. That's why the Bible says you need a preacher. I need a preacher. I have people that I'm accountable to. Because I want to, I want to live in the kingdom of God. And not in the kingdom of the world. And I'm telling you, we've got to get a hold of the word of God so we're not confused of what is the world and what is the kingdom of God. Now let me teach you this, y'all, real fast. I've said it many times, but y'all need to 
get a hold of it again and again and again. You ready? God is good. Say it again, y'all, loudly. God is good. And the devil is bad. If you, <laughs> Y'all sound like some young kids. Bad, you know. But that's the truth. You'll understand the Bible if you understand just that. God's good. The devil's bad. Okay? So everything good comes from above. Everything bad, you need to understand. Cancer, you cannot convince me that it's good. Having a terrible breakup as a kid or even an adult is not good. Having a marriage that is being destroyed Did y'all see me almost fall? (laughs) Falling is not good. (laughs) Having issues with your health, sickness and disease is not good. Therefore, they do not come from God. People get confused because God allows a lot of things. But God's not responsible. I preached in San Angelo... Um, just a few things about overcoming trials because that's where God really has me right now. How do you overcome a trial? Well, the Word of God is a really good start because once you start speaking the Word of God when the devil's attacking and you start saying, I can do all things through Christ, which gives me strength. Devil, you get under my feet. One thing my mama taught me from going to from the Southern Baptist Church to the Pentecostal Church, you remember? One thing she taught me is how not to be afraid of the devil. Because most people are more afraid of the devil. Most people know my cousin played professional baseball. Um, they won the world when he played for San Francisco. And uh, then he... he, he I felt bad for him because Texas beat his last team, Arizona. And he got a three-year contract with Arizona in the later part of his career. Stayed in, at the Marlins in Florida for about six years. Heck of a baseball player. I mean, he he could hit those home runs. His name was Cody Ross. You just look him up, and you'll just see all of his stats. Um, but one thing that that we've got to remember... You know, when we're, when we're living in the kingdom, is that the devil is just a fallen angel. He's just a fallen angel. You and I were created in the image of God. So why would you be afraid of an angel? An angel is in the spirit. We're not afraid of some devil, but baseball players, oh, Jesus, they're superstitious. Cody wouldn't step on that little white line, so he'd jump over it. If he wasn't batting good, he wouldn't shave for a week. Some of them do worse than that. They don't change their undies for a while till they win. I just had a bad thought come in my mouth. <laughs> Jesus. You know what superstition is? Because it's all in the rodeo world. I mean... the. Um, they won't wear the same shirt if they didn't do good. All kinds of junk. You know what superstition is? Fear of devils. You're just afraid of a devil. You, you don't want something bad to happen to you. Well, wait a minute. We don't live by a God of bad. We live by, with a God of, of goodness, mercy, grace, praise God. See, if you understand that, y'all, you will understand the Bible. It'll start becoming easier to you. Anything bad It's not God trying to teach you a lesson. You know what God did? Is he gave you the word of God. That's what teaches you the lessons. You don't have to go through the fire of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and go through that fiery furnace to teach you something. No, God's given it to you through the word of God. So if we'll just start learning this word on how to live, you'll be able to respond to an enemy right. The first thing that I taught the other day about responding to an enemy is refusing to retaliate because that's what we want to do. When there's an enemy that does us wrong, we want to get them back. But God's, God's not like that. If you refuse to retaliate, a soft answer turns away wrath, the Word of God says in Proverbs 15 and 1. 
The second thing is that we need to love our enemies. That's a hard thing to do, y'all, because I don't want to love someone that does me wrong, that's talked bad about me. But I'm here to tell you, the Word says that if you'll walk in love, it not only change, will change them, it will actually change you to where you're not offended all the time. Come on, someone preach back to me for a second. You don't want to be people that are offended constantly because you'll keep looking for another church because the church will offend you as well. Someone will sit in your seat that you're used to. Someone's not going to say hello to you probably because they're going through something. But if you're not offended and walking in love, I'm telling you it will turn an enemy. Matter of fact, when you love on them and just walk in love, it'll cause hot coals to come on their head. Now, you're not wanting the hot coals to come on their head in the flesh. You're just wanting them to know that it's not going to bother you by what they do or say to you. We've got to start understanding how to respond to an enemy. The Bible says in Matthew 5 and 44, But I say unto you, love your enemies. For if you love them which love you, what reason do you have in in order for them to to do uh, bad unto you? No, you just love them even if they do the bad things or say the bad things. Love is a very, very important key to overcoming trials and tribulations, responding to your enemies. But again, remember, your enemy is not the person, okay? It's that stinking devil that's tempting them. And did that person has to submit to the temptation to be angry, to be mad, to do harm, etc., to lie, okay? Listen, so we got to start making the right decisions. Do you realize that you got to make a decision to accept Jesus? You've got to make a decision to be kind You've got to make a decision even to love your enemies. Well, how do I love them? I mean, how do you love an enemy? You know what I've learned? You start changing your heart. You start renewing your mind. Here's an example really fast. Why don't you try to pray this prayer? I mean, think of someone that you're just having a hard time with. I mean, I'm telling you, it could, it could be anybody. It could be family. It could be just someone at work. It could be anybody. You know how I've learned to be overcomers and not, I mean, respond to our enemies? Pray in this prayer. God, you love so-and-so. I ask you to help me love so-and-so. If you love them, sir, then I'm going to love them. Now, I'm not saying you hang out with them. Say amen to that. I mean, you don't want to yoke yourself with people that's mean, hateful. But if you love them, it may change their heart. See, that's our heart, y'all. God doesn't want anybody to go to hell. That's why I'm out there constantly trying to get people born again. How do you respond to your enemies? These are one way just to simply ask God to help you love them and love them with the God kind of love. If you do that, you'll you'll begin to feel something uh, transforming in your heart. I mean, nothing will bother you anymore because you just walk in love. I mean, they might say something tacky again, but you'll just go... (laughs) Listen, when I would drive going to rodeos when I was younger, uh, on on the radio there would be this uh, this guy would come on like two or three in the morning, and you'd turn on the radio and and he would allow people to call in with issues, and I mean there were issues. Here was his biggest thing. You know what it was? He would go, you know what? Do this with me. Ha <laughs> ha, ho ho, he he. And they couldn't do it at the start. No, 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 really. Say, ha, ha, ho, ho, he, he. And you feel so dumb. (laughs) But then all of a sudden, do it again. Ha, ha, ho, ho, he, he. Ha, ha, ho, ho, he, he. And I mean, you'll feel dumber, but all of a sudden you'll forget about the the stuff you're you're going through. 
Ha, ha, ha. Ho, 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 ho. He, he, he. And I mean, you're like, this guy's crazy. But all of a sudden, you get out of all that junk, y'all. You get your mind off of the trial, off of the tribulation, off of the enemy, and you start getting it on some joy. You know, I think that's what we need in these last days. And I know I'm done. I, man, that clock goes fast. Look how big it is back there, y'all. Turn around. Look at it. That thing's so big. You know what we need today? Joy. I say it like this, not happiness. I mean, the Dallas Cowboys are winning. But just wait a week or two. I'm not confessing that on. That's my team. But I'm just saying, every time they're just, they got momentum, then they do something stupid. I'm not talking about happiness when your favorite team wins. Burn it, Bulldogs. Liberty Hill. I'm talking about joy. 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 That's forever and ever and ever. So let's do something. I'll finish this message next week. Man, maybe you are here and it seems like you don't have much joy. The issues that were seen in Israel, and then, I'm telling you, they are already here, y'all. It wouldn't be good for one of them terrorists to come into this church, because I'm sure there's a lot of you packing. <laughs> Just don't let me know it, okay? And <laughs> I've got to say this. Don't everybody get your gun out and just start shooting, because you'll shoot all of us, Okay? <laughs> I'm not trying to scare the visitors. They're like, oh, my God. <laughs> They're looking over. Do you really got a gun? You know, I'm, they probably don't. But, uh, but one thing we do is we, we, we have uh, uh, police and th those kind of people. We get trained because what is the devil? He's bad. I mean, so I've been through some bad, bad things that, matter of fact, uh, Hagee, who they have the huge church and the largest church in San Antonio, uh, his boy is going to preach for me at the minister's conference, cowboy minister's conference, but he, man, he loves the Western world. And um, anyway, his dad, though, y'all see his dad a lot. They talk about Israel. They, I mean, again, again, Cornerstone is a huge, huge church in, in San Antonio. And I'll never forget the man coming down the aisle while he was preaching. Remember, this was way back when. It was on TV. You could look it up. And the guy comes down to the front while he's preaching, and he's just like right here. And the guy gets the gun. Now, somehow, he got past all those, those uh, ushers. I don't know how he did that, because they're supposed to be ready. Tackle. And he's standing right there. And he says, I'm going to kill you, preacher. Now, Mr. Hagee, Pastor Hagee didn't have time to get behind, run in fear. You know what he did? He said, you will not kill me because this is my sword and this is my shield. And I'm protected by the blood of Jesus. On national television, they only had about 4,000 in their congregation at that time. On national television, the guy shot everything in that gun. Bam, bam, bam. People freaking out. There wasn't nothing that touched that man of God. On TV, you know why? Because he trusted in his God, which is our God. He was covered by the blood of Jesus. That's why we pray Psalms 91 over us. That's why there's no time to, to play church. It's time we get serious at, at a young age and at an older age. You notice I used, I didn't point. <laughs> it's time we don't play church. It's time we start living by the word of God. But an enemy will cause us not to believe this word because our focus gets off the word onto the issue. So I'm trying to convince us through the Word of God, that let's get hooked on the Word of God. 
Yeah, our government needs prayer. We need to vote in the right people, praise God. We need, we need everybody else to do it. But you know what? When you vote, you're still planting a seed. And I'm telling you, you don't have to live in fear. Let's sit, live in joy. So with four minutes left, <laughs> if you're having issues with joy, and we just need, to, we need a little bit of faith, I want to pray for you right now. You're just having issues staying and remaining in joy. I don't know what it might be, and we don't care, because God knows. But if you just need some agreement prayerfully with joy, get up here and stand right here, and I'm going to pray for you. Come on. You just need joy. Come up here right fast. Hurry. Come on. You just need some joy. You're going through a few things. No one may even know about it, but you need some joy. Come here real fast. Don't matter who you are, just come right up here. Let's pray for you. Anybody else? Just by faith, you want to get up and, and you want to move because, I mean, you can get it there, but man, when you get, you get prayed over, that's when joy comes. And you see, and I don't know what's going on in your life, and I really doesn't matter to me it, as far as what's going on. What matters to me is that you get joy. You receive it by faith. So look at all these people are going to stretch their hands towards you and we're going to lift you up that joy comes to you in Jesus' name. You don't deserve to go through what you're going through. So you've got to get your faith up. You're a minister of the Word of God and the attacks are going to come, but greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. And you deserve joy. Would you all stretch your hands and just pray, Father, thank you. Thank you that I lift up my brother and sister. And everything that they're going through, the key word going through, Jesus. will not, will not uh, be the, the God of their life. What you're going through is not God. God is your source. So I thank you for joy. God, joy come in Jesus' name. Say, I receive that. Father... I thank you for joy. All the things, the, sometimes we think we go through one mistake after another. But Father, not this woman of God, because you have her in the palm of your hand. And I thank you, Lord, that you love her. And the Spirit of the Lord just uh, is, is continuing saying in my mind to stay hooked. Don't you give up. Don't back up. No matter what you've gone through, you've got to stand fast. Because you're, you're a lot stronger now because of, of the issues that you're going through. Don't even know what they are totally. But God loves you enough to say, hey, you're not, he's not giving up on you. Don't give up on him, okay? So, Father, I thank you for joy. Joy to come to her in Jesus' name. Amen. Deep breath. Father, thank you, Lord. Thank you for this couple. I thank you, Lord, that I... I command finances to come in their hands. I command health to come to their bodies from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. Even if it's agreement, joy comes. Joy comes because joy is strength. And Father, thank you. Thank you for joy in Jesus' name. Say, I receive that. Father, thank you, Lord, for Brandon. I just thank you, Lord, for uh, you know the struggle. You know everything that's gone on in his life. And I thank you, Lord, that you don't even remember it now. So, Father, thank you. Thank you that he has victory. I thank you, Lord, that, that the word of God is yes and amen and that he lives by the word and the word only. So we give you praise for victory, victory, which then starts with joy. So joy come in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. All right. Every head bowed real fast. Y'all can go to your seat. Pray this prayer, everybody. It's, even if you're a believer, pray this prayer. Say, Father in heaven, I open the door of my heart. I confess that Jesus Christ is my Lord. Jesus, come into my heart and save me. Forgive me of my sins. I believe you've been raised from the dead, Jesus. And I'm coming to heaven when I leave this earth. But while I'm here on this earth... I'm going to live for you. I'm going to have heaven here on this earth. 
Thank you, Jesus, for being my friend and being my Savior and being my Lord. I give you praise as I pray this prayer to you, the Father, in Jesus' name. With no one looking around, just real fast. If you just prayed that prayer for the very first time, you had never given your heart to Jesus until right then. And I realized that I had even the believers pray the prayer. Most of you know why I do that. Not so that you'll get saved again, because you, you cannot. You need to have confidence in your salvation. You might backslide. That has nothing to do with your salvation. God just wants you to come back home. The reason I have even believers pray that prayer is you've got to learn how to lead people to Jesus. Because they won't come to church sometimes. But if you lead them out there in the horse stall, at the arena, at your school, at your job, or wherever God opens the door, when you pray the prayer and you learn it, then you'll know how to lead them to Jesus. But I'm talking to specifically anybody here or watching that just prayed that prayer. If you did it for the first time this morning, you meant it, then it's time to acknowledge it before a man. Remember, the Bible says if you'll acknowledge Jesus before men, Jesus then says, I'll acknowledge you before the Father. Here's what it means. When you're not afraid, you're not ashamed of your Savior, you're willing to tell people. If you just gave your heart to Jesus and you prayed that prayer, when I count to three, I want you to raise your hand up and you're saying, God, I meant that prayer. I need Jesus in my life. And then just put your hand right back down. I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to ask you to come to the front. I'm just going to ask you right where you're sitting or standing. If you just prayed that prayer that we just prayed for the first time and you meant it, you asked Jesus to come into your life, I want you to get that hand up at the count of three and then just put it right back down. Ready? With boldness. We're not ashamed. Boldness. One, two, three. Go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Just get your hand up. If you, if you raised it, just make sure you, you raised it on purpose. Praise God. Amen. All right, look at me, y'all. Man, I love it when, when people give their hearts to the Lord. Amen.